Good afternoon. Welcome to our fourth annual, I guess, or fourth time that we've been doing conversations with Red Dog over here at Tier 3, or Tier 3, I'm used to my <laughs> tier system, I would say, at, at T3, you know, I'm here with a different co-host, usually we have Brittany, Brittany had other commitments, but I'm so happy to have Vicky with me. Thank you for having me, Scott. It's exciting to be here. Uh, listen, everyone keeps asking, we need more Vicky. We want to see Vicky. You talk about her all the time on the virtual trade floor, how talented she is helping you with the charts from off the charts. So I wanted to bring her on. I wanted to actually be able to answer the questions or look at the questions that you're asking so we could answer them here. And we talked about what type of questions we want to answer. Should we answer some lifestyle questions? Sure. Yeah, why not? Why not, right? We could answer lifestyle questions. We could answer market questions. We could answer strategy questions. Whatever you want to ask us, this is your time to have access to us over here at, T at T3. Why do I keep saying <laughs> Tier 3? <laughs> it's, it's been a long, long day, long day, long <laughs> week. I'm moving tomorrow. Anyway, but before we get into the questions, I want to give you a little sneaky peek into the life that Vicky and I lead. I'm in a little MGM and I'm still in OH. I bought it this morning at 107.50. Apple's good. You, know, you don't buy in the first five minutes of the day. I live in Jersey City. I was born in Long Island. Went to school at SUNY Albany. As a firm, we are five partners and I'm one of them. I am the strategist that puts the game plan together for about 400 traders. I kind of command that army. It's going to make us money with that. Is on the daylight today, if it's up or down three handles, that's when you see where other money is really getting put to work, and that's where the action is. You held 1,600 the whole time? I got 1,000. See, that's a growing experience for you, brother. <laughs> All of the traders trade our money, so they have to be right. They have to say, OK, I think Apple's going from 260 to 265. And if they're right, they make money. It's a good setup. Stick with the wind. Okay. It's the right trade. Don't watch it so close. Relax. Scott's coming on in a minute, so we're going to listen to Scott. <laughs> Technicals first. The market looks good. Volume seems a little light. What do you see? Right now, the market's been behaving very well technically. Let's talk to this guy. Now, here's a guy, Scott Redler, who does nothing but technical analysis, but puts his money where his mouth is because he's got a firm and his partners put their money in every day and trade on technical analysis. I'm not looking for a home run. I'm not. It's not a get rich quick scheme. If I'm able to pick the direction of the market, I could book a winning trade and I could provide for my family. <laughs> There was a breakout. That is the next evolution. Welcome back here to our conversation. Now, you saw enough about us. This isn't about us. This is about you. So I want Vicky, read me the first question so we can get rolling here. All right, Scott. This question is from Deator Trader. Um, where do you see the SPY going next week? How confident are you in this rally? How confident am I in this rally? Well, a lot of you guys know that we switch gears here at T3. Uh, I've tweeted, I've said, you know, our P&Ls aren't correlated to market performance, it's correlated to market action. And about four or five weeks ago, uh, IBD went into market correction, not to just always tout them, but their technicians talk about the landscape of the market. That was right after about five or six distribution days within a short time period, so it showed institutional selling. So yesterday, we started talking on the desk. I'm like, Vicky, do you think that IBD can go back into a confirmed rally, or do you think it's a little early? Well, it put us in a more neutral stance after yesterday. Yeah, so like, I, I, exactly. She's sitting next to me. I'm like, what do you think here? Are we going more neutral negative because that's the way we were or are we going neutral to positive? So I was like, you know what? Let's go neutral to positive. We, uh, on Tuesday, we were basically flat. Let's start going for more of a you know, trade for cash flow to maybe putting some positions back on. So if we take mm -hmm. a quick look at the chart of the S&P or the SPX, you'll see what we came into today. So if you look here, you know, we talk about trends and we talk about time frames. OK, this has been the macro trend that we've had intact all the way up since October. We came in and we retested it, remember, on that, uh, what was that, April 10th. From there, we came back up and we retested this broken trend line, which we talked about probably about a, a few weeks before, right when IBD put us in a market correction. So if you got out of some stock and you got out of the way so you could become unemotional, you probably were able to sell around 1400, 1404, you know, or even when they put us in rally under pressure. So you saved yourself some pain. From then, we retested, and then on Monday, we came back. Now, for those of you that watch Morning Call, you know that on Monday, we said, you know, there are points of reference here we have to look out. I was sitting on the desk, 
with Vicky. I'm like, Vicky, we might have a double bottom. We might break that reactionary low. What was the level we were talking about? I think we even listed it off the charts. Um, like 1357 from, I think, April 10th or something. There you go. 1357 <laughs> from April 10th. She's a real trader and she does it actively. That was a number we all had in our head. So we weren't sure if we would break that level or if we would bounce off that. So if you take a look back at the chart, you'll see that that's when we put in this double bottom. Here's your reactionary low at 1357. Here's that double bottom. So we put in a double bottom. This was an area that we were net short over the weekend. Those of you who follow us on Twitter, I was like, I'm in tier two spiders short overnight, tier two net short, you know, covered into this area because it was a worthy cover. And then since then, we've had a nice rally since. We've had four up days. We actually just traded through uh, this 1392 uh, resistance. So this was a time that, you know, shorts had to cover. Another question, okay, or another thesis. This morning we came, we weren't really sure. There was a line in the sand in the spiders that we watched all morning. Off the top of your head, Vicky, what was that line in the sand in the spiders? 139.36 or something. 139.36. <laughs> something a, like that. I, I'm like a proud <laughs> poppy here. Anyway, 139.36 was the level, not because she just memorized it. You look at the chart here, you know, this was the level in the spiders. We go to the spiders real quickly. This was the grudge match. This high here was what? Oh my goodness, 139.36. That was the level that if you were short and you were trading it versus a spot, you had to cover. Okay, hopefully you covered a little bit yesterday or you covered into the down open because I actually had some shorts in the spiders overnight to hedge some of my longs and that was your spot. If you go right here to this three minute chart, you'll see how long today we actually danced around that spot because the market was not sure. There was a definite grudge match coming into this spot. It tried it a few times, it couldn't get through and then lo and behold around one o'clock, pow. Nice even day trade. If you weren't in it, you could have added right here clean and then we trended up the rest of the day so as far as a, a day trade it was a good day trade and as far as covering your short that was your spot so again now you go back to what the question was which i really don't even remember because i'm just babbling what was, what was the question again um <laughs> where do you see the spy going this week and how confident are you in this rally well we are now on thursday and right. basically it's behind us so we have one more day left of the week so at this point, I was expecting digestion today. You know, after three up days, digestion would have been good. That's why even this morning when the futures were flat, everyone's like, oh, no follow through, no follow through. What do you mean? We just had a three day move. Obviously, we're going to pack and fill. You're going to see some leaders emerge. We're going to be able to trade for cash flow. And then we'll see what we want to be in if we want to be in for a bigger move, if that's the case. Now, the tricky thing here is, you know, between May and July, we've had some false starts and rallies. So it's kind of hard to fully trust and go just say, all in because IBD has us in a, in a new fledgling rally because of the timing. If this was just, you know, August, September, maybe I would be a little bit more confident. But what this does, it just puts me back to being neutral to positive, you know, mm -hmm. have a hedge, have positions that are working. Don't just think that we're going to be in a downdraft and, and play it by ear. But again, it's all about your entries and it's all about your exits. So give me the next question here. Okay. Well, to kind of follow up with the market, Chambi2470 says, is this real or is the market being primed for a European collapse? <laughs> well, it kind of, that's like the first question, is this real? Everyone right. wants to know, is this real? You know, you know, a uh, hundred handles from now, people will say it's real and we would have missed a lot of trades. So you just have to take it day by day. You have to take it according to your risk. Okay, at this particular point, um, as far as the meat and potatoes of this move in the last four days, you know, it, it, a lot of it just transpired. You go back to the chart here. Okay, and if you take a look, we just went from this area in the spiders, which is what, 135.94, all the way up to almost 140.20. We broke through some resistance, so it showed some power. I would say we measured along the way. As far as it being real, you know, real is a relative term. Does that mean that all of a sudden we're going to, you know, go through these highs here and go through 142 and be in a raging bull market? I don't think so. I think you could definitely pick your spots and know your exits and entries. And, mm -hmm. and as far as being primed to a European collapse, I think the market is actually pricing in muddling along. If we were mm -hmm. priming up for a European collapse, you would have seen you know, us back at the lows, breaking through the lows. So at this point, I think we're pretty much pricing in muddling along. If all of a sudden after earnings season, we start getting the yields well above six in Spain and in Italy, Chances are we'll have to probably pull in and we'll handle and we'll see how the, the market handles those headlines because every time we get the headlines, we see the performance and then we base the future action on how we respond. Okay, so next question we have is from Daniel DSY. He wants to know, did momentum stock, are momentum stocks done with their correction? Can we see new highs from those that are best in breed? For example, CMG, Priceline, RL, ISRG, and Starbucks. 
<laughs> That's a uh, lot of them. Uh, yeah, just, <laughs> just to name a few. Yeah. <laughs> but on, on that list of stocks, how many of those do we trade? Um, I mean, actively, not a lot, but we use them for gauges. Right. I would say CMG, we haven't been trading as much. Priceline, we've been using to, to trade more Apple and more Baidu and more, mm -hmm. or Amazon or Netflix. But, you know, these are good gauges of the market. But, you know, in the last tail end of this correction, you saw them start to break down. And all you really need to do is follow Apple. Now that Apple is out of the way and we had the earnings and, and they were really good, you know, I think watch that. You know, if we, if we continue to hold that earnings gap in Apple, I think there will be some confidence behind the momentum names. If we start to fill a bigger portion of that gap in Apple, you're going to see people probably be like, you know what, if Apple, the best name stock in the world that has fundamental qualities, growth qualities, momentum qualities, if it can't hold the majority of its gap, chances are some of the other ones will come under some pressure also. If you look here at Apple, I'll get into this one first. You know, you know, we traded very, very actively. You know, this was a great sign for momentum names when, you know, about two weeks ago, if you remember, the market had a nice bounce back and we were talking short at 620, 621, and then you had a nice move down. And then all of a sudden we had this red dog reversal that took us back to resistance. If you remember, we were drawing this line right around here. So what do we do? We came back, retested it. Then it was actually a really good short. And then here's earnings. So if you want to talk really quickly about Apple, about last time, because I like to look at past performance or look past action, I remember it very, very closely. I'm going to show you right here. This is the last time Apple gapped up, had earnings. Okay, that day was also, you, you, you were, it was a better sell than buy into the excitement. But then what did it do? It went sideways. It gave you a point of reference to trade against. So that point of reference in Apple, I remember, was like 443. So on this green day, I remember buying some. And then once it traded above this two-day pivot, you could have bought some. And then obviously, once it started to get in motion, that's when the run began. So you come back and fast forward to where we are now. You know, if you look here, it's a different landscape. The range has definitely increased. And now it's doing the same thing. It gapped up on earnings. And obviously, it was a better sell than buy. Because if you would have bought it at 618, you definitely would be thinking a little bit, you know, to yourself, can I hold this? So at this particular point, you know, you have a new point of reference. Your new point of reference right now is uh, 602.13. You also have a defined resistance area. Right here, the high is 614. This is 618. This is six and a quarter. So with a few more sideways days, we're going to figure out whether or not it's going to continue to the upside, which would be very healthy for the market, or it pushes through the previous day's low like it did today. And it was a good cash flow short, 606. You know, it went down to 602. So if we open up flattish and it goes below today's low of 602, maybe it comes in and tries to, you know, get down to this 595 area. So I would watch this because it's probably going to correlate to the stocks you just asked about. Like, look at CMG. CMG, um, all, you know, again, it's a lot about timing here. Um, this was a, a really big uptrend that's been intact. I remember, I think I was talking about it last week when it reported earnings and I didn't think it was enough. It broke it right here, came back to the 50 day, wound up breaking below it as a trap, held it, and now it bounced back up. So at this point, you know, I, I think that it, it has a lot to prove. Okay, you could be long versus area. You have a little bit more resistance to where it broke down from. So I, I think it's more of a trade and has a lot to prove because it did break this trend line. If you look at something like Priceline, I don't think they came out with their earnings yet, so it's still somewhat uh, vulnerable. This one came all the way in to the 50-day and held. Okay, and then if you look at this small little downtrend here in Priceline, yeah, it, it sort of broke above it today, which is showing some power, showing some health. But again. You know, there's still some scared shorts in there. The earnings still aren't out there, so it still has some vulnerability. But overall, pretty healthy that it held a 50-day. It bounced back. Well, give me like an, what were one or two more of those stocks on that list? Um, like an ISRG. ISRG. ISRG came out with earnings too, and this one I think you know was greeted very well. I think it was what two weeks ago. Right. I remember it gapped up on earnings. Yeah. Gapped up on earnings. So let's see how it's reacted since. If you look at ISRG, you will see. Um, here is, okay, just it's a very good, uh, just say even little exercise here. It gapped up on earnings, right? And then at an inside day, if you used this little um, area as your stop, okay, this stop was what? 569.60, okay, it came in, filled a big portion of it, okay, now it came back up. So I would say something like this, it's actually coming into a bit of a wedge type formation. So it, it still looks healthy. It didn't even make it down to the 50 day moving average. So to me, that's showing leadership. You don't have to worry about the earnings coming out. I think you'd definitely stay in this as a macro trade. As far as a momentum trade, this thing starts to get above 578.75. I'd be in there for the cash flow. And then it'll be really nice to see 
if we could start breaking above old highs to show some power in the market. And that would also give us a little health or show us that if some leaders and momentum names can make new highs, mm -hmm. that'll breed confidence that maybe, you know, the market will continue to the upside and then it could be for real, like <laughs> people are asking. Okay, so let's continue to stick with leaders. Um, PSK Ophis, sorry. <laughs> um, CF looks great, but other eggs and Moo, not such a great day. Scott, do you continue to hold CF here? It does act very well. Uh, see, I like to go best in breed, and I've done this, you know, mm -hmm. segment a few times with, with, um, with Jill, and she loves the space. She knows all the numbers about it, and so do them over the street, which is great. And they think it's a third, fourth quarter play. Um, they've been focusing on the moo and, and on stocks like Mosaic and Potash and and some of the leaders. For me, I don't, I'm not in everything. I just go for best in breed. And for uh, that, I thought CF had the best setup. I know Vicky's put it in off the charts. How many times have we had that off the charts? I mean, for like the last couple of weeks, three, four weeks even. It's just been an upper consolidation. So, But the market's kind of like not ready to know whether they could just let it go. Right. And it hasn't come out with earnings yet. Which, which is I another. Think next week. I think next Tuesday May or Wednesday. 4th, I think it is. Or May 3rd. It could be. So, so. for me. <laughs> I'm hoping that it, it rallies and extends before earnings because one of my rules is I don't take stocks into earnings. Sometimes mm -hmm. I take options because I'm a bit risk averse. So back to the question about CF. If you look at the chart of CF, it looks different than the other ones. CF, you know, right now, try to break out above this range. Uh, some people are a little skeptical because some of the earnings out of the ag field hasn't been good. So they're wondering, they don't want to, you know, if they're going to start going all in here, will they get sandbagged by earnings? So rightly so. Uh, two days ago, I got back involved. I think we got back around 189.90 and then once it started to trade through this pivot we added you know so using our tier system that we talk about you know i was in a feeler below 190 went above the high of 190.70 that day added took half off on the close then today it opened down you could have rebought some more through 192.35 right because that's a momentum trade stock trades through a previous high shows relative strength can continue went as high as 95.29 so if you bought here you had about two bucks to sell some so you could have tiered in and tiered out and stayed in tier one. I'm in tier one. There were times when I was in tier two based on the action, mm -hmm. you know, but I'm taking cash flow and I'm holding some. That's the way you trade these type of names. You hold a, a position you feel comfortable and then you make money intraday based on the pattern. And today it opened up negative with POT's earnings. I thought maybe POT would be able to burn off the bad report like sometimes ags do, but it didn't. If you take a look at the chart at POT, it's going to have to bounce pretty quickly. To me, this is still showing you some problems. You know, you're coming into some big time support here. You're coming into support, you know, support around 42. So, you know, for it's closed a little green. So I would say it's got to get away from this area real quick. Otherwise, you're going to see more pressure. If you look at something like Mosaic, um, it acted better than POT because the earnings are out of the way. People aren't fearful. A little red dog reversal came into the gap. Close strong. I still think you could be long tier one, but I wouldn't be in there for momentum until it starts getting above this 54. And the other one I remember talking about this morning was AGU. You know, to me, this this stock had a, also a best in breed type of pattern here. And look at this, a lot different. It opened up down, went green, acting better. So to me, still technically, I see AGU and CF being the best. I see POT, I see Mosaic. You know, holding, but don't get too aggressive because technically they haven't started to really, you know, show you anything more than that type of stance there. All righty. Scott, before we go to next questions, let's take a commercial break. All right. I could use a commercial break. Um, but before we get to there, I just want to let you know that we're doing a raffle. And it's, a, it's an unbelievable, unbelievable situation because we're raffling off what this is, a, a trader psychology class, okay, mm -hmm. or course. Usually we charge, I'm not exactly sure because I'm, I'm the chief strategic officer, not the back end guy, but I think the value here is well over north of 500 bucks and it has great, great you know, content on there. You have a whole manual here. Look at the size of this bad boy. There's videos. So what I would do is I would enter your phone number, get in the raffle. We're going to do it for the end of the show so you'll see who wins. So you know, there's a number. Put it in if, you, if you're interested and we'll see you right after the break. Hi, I'm Sean Hendelman, CEO of T3 Live where we train, coach, and mentor traders to understand how to develop an edge in the markets so you can put your money to work with confidence. The T3 Live approach includes a mix of training, trading, and technology to help you learn to recognize, adapt, and ultimately take advantage of different market conditions. So what actually separates T3 Live from other educational firms? For one, transparency. We show all of our positions live, so there's no smoke and mirrors. Basically, we put our money where our mouth is. We have to because we're regulated by the SEC and the Chicago Board of Exchange. Number two, we're real traders. 
you'll be learning from real professional traders that make a living trading their own proprietary trading accounts, not just instructors that don't trade. Your goal should be to associate and learn from big traders who can teach you how to take your trading to the next level. And three, credibility. Millions of people turn to places like CNBC, Wall Street Journal, Fox Business News, and these outlets actually look to T3 Live for information. No other educational firms are asked to be a consistent contributor. We at T3 Live would like to get you started with a step-by-step -step method that has been proven over time. The same blueprint for success that I've gone through. It's not a weekend seminar, it's an approach, a mindset, a process to show you how to take control of your financial future. To begin your training with T3 Live, we would like to offer you the opportunity to enroll in our foundation 30-day online home study course. The reason I'm willing to give you such a valuable course for free is I'm sure that once you complete the program, you'll want to continue your education with our team. All you have to do is fill in your name, email address, and I'll see you on the other side. Welcome back to our conversations. Let's go right to another question. What's on board or what's next here, Vicky? Okay, we've got another question from Dieter Trader. Um, he's also been following your calls on GLD, inverse head and shoulders. Um, did yesterday mark a bottom of the right shoulder? Fed seems very open to more QE. Aha, more <laughs> QE. Um, if you've been following me on this trade, you know that I've been getting a little chopped up. That gold, you know, people are saying back in 2008, you made that awesome call, 850 to 1500, we got there, blah, blah, blah. You know, there were a lot of trades along the way, so everyone's looking for me to make like a big call in gold. So I've been watching this inverse head and shoulders pattern try and be put into place. I've tried buying it, adding to it for this intermediate downtrend to be broken, and it hasn't yet. And it's been actually a little aggravating, and if you're trading with me, you're probably a little aggravated also, I'm sorry. Anyway, if you look at the chart here, you will see we're getting close to this once again. <laughs> so here you are. Let me show you the more macro pattern here, okay? Uh, if you take a look, let me get this a little bit up so you can see it. You know, I've drawn this many times. There's a few patterns within the patterns here. Here is your left shoulder. You know, here is your head, okay? And then here is your, you know, right shoulder-ish, I guess if you could say that. And then if you remember that day, uh, what was it, like two months ago, I remember talking about it right after the Fed came out. This was on, uh, what was this, uh, February 29th. It, it, you know, you had a huge, harsh, pwned down move and it engulfed this entire section. So, you know, it was kind of follow through to what was this outside, you know, day slash top that's been controlling this trend ever since late August. So, you know, here we are right here. And it's looking a little bit better, okay? Uh, I think famous last words is, is it different this time? How many times have you said to yourself, it's gonna be different? Well, meanwhile, you know, so the Fed came and gone. You had a nice reversal. I bought some today. I think I paid, what price did we enter GLD today? Um, like 160.50-ish to like track it and then add it, I think at 161. So we're in about a tier one to tier one and a half, mm -hmm. okay, which is what I've been in the last few times. So I remember tweeting, I'm like, I'm buying some here, 160.50 versus the low of 160.10. And, you know, if it starts acting well, I'll add above 161. So you go back to the chart, this will show you the tier system. Right now I'm in about a tier one, okay, because it still has a lot to prove. You still, every time you bought it at this line, it got rejected and you, and you kind of got hurt. I remember buying it here, adding on this day, you know, and then this day I wound up getting stopped out. I think I added on this day, got stopped out. So am I learning my lesson? No. <laughs> but anyway, you know, I'm not in huge. It's one of my multiple positions. But one of these times, it's going to break through and be a nice trade and test these moving averages between 163, 160, you know, 163.30 to 164.93. So if you look here, you know, this is your next big resistance or decent resistance. And then obviously you have, you know, where we rallied from after that. So at this particular point, I'm in tier one. If we trade through, this uh, 161.40, I'll probably be adding. I'd probably add here, and then I would sell a little bit in front of you know, this, and then I would stay with what I have, and I would keep doing it if that trend continues. But for right now, it's still in this intermediate downtrend. Very interesting. This went from the C list over here back to my A list. Now, let me, I'm, gonna tell, I'm gonna ask Vicky a question off the cuff. <laughs> you guys ask me questions, I'll ask her a question. What's the difference between being on the A, B, or C list? Um, well, for me, I would do chart pattern. Like if there's no chart pattern, it's probably on the C list, no setup, whatever. But when it started, like if a downtrend comes into play, maybe that bumps up to B or A list. So if it's on your B list or your A list, you're like, okay, this is set up. This is something that can give me cash flow. And it's also something that can give you a multi-day move. Mm -hmm. and Definitely. If, and if it's on the C list, it's like being Forget on. Forget about it. 
it's the, the people that don't get into the club. <laughs> you're on the C list, you're not getting into the club unless you're, you know, I'm not even gonna get into that whole thing. Anyway, so with that said, you know, gold looks good. And I think there, you know, there's some questions from, you know, the, the chat room about silver. So I'll just take it from here also. Um, last time we tried to rally, I felt like the silver pattern was a little bit better than the gold pattern. This time, I think silver has a bit more to prove. If you look here at silver, SLV, you will see that, you know, it had a, a bit of a red dog reversal right here, outside day. So I'm gonna explain this pattern a little bit to you because a lot of people still are new to us, ask me, what's a red dog reversal? Why does it work so well? Okay, here you go. SLV up here was as high as, let's get this back on the board here just so you could see. This was as high as 36.44, right? So this was an outside day, huge one. Traded through and then engulfed this entire range and just like GLD, it controlled the move to the downside. So for people trying to play a bounce, because here you are as low, I mean, as high as 36.44, all the way down to below 30. You're like, okay, let me try and see if I could play um, a counter trend move or maybe an inflection point. So here's where it broke below this 30.65. So if you were playing it for a bounce, like, uh-oh, we made a new low, we can continue, who knows where we go. So you got out. Some people thinking that the metals are gonna continue to get crushed, got short, and then we reversed up. Not, so, not a big powerful one, but you did. So people probably went long on, on the close here, okay, or when it back, went back above 29.60. So if you did so, you bought right here, 29.60 with a stop at the low of the day, 29.09, so about 50 cents. So um, right there, Ricky, we know the, the risk. The risk is 50 cents. Mm -hmm. So if it's 29.65 and it just came in six points, so you're risking 50 cents to play a counter trend move and something just came off seven bucks, what would you say? Is that a decent risk reward scenario? Definitely. And, and it's worth it. It, it. It's a good setup. It's a good hand. So sometimes it leads to a day and a half move for cash flow traders. And if you look here, it did. You go back to the chart of silver. Okay, you could have went long it yesterday and then it opened up basically flat when it went through yesterday's high of 30.09. You could have added to it and then it closed at 30.18. So you have your day and a half trade. So nice little cash flow day and a half setup. And now who knows if it starts to act better, fill the gap and start to break above, just say this 3075, all of a sudden you just got involved in a swing trade with a 50 cent stop. Maybe it starts a new trend, something that just pulled in six, seven dollars. So you could use that red dog reversal for anything as a day and a half cash flow trade, as a swing trade. It all depends on your time frame, but both GLD and silver acting a bit better, but those intermediate downtrends are not broken yet, but keep them on the A-list for now. Alrighty, sounds good. Um, let's move on to a different sector. Seeking, seeking Beta One wants to know, is CZR fatally wounded at this point, in your opinion? <laughs> I don't think it's fatally, you know, Caesar, you picture like a sword and uh, the hat and this and that. I don't think it's fatally wounded, but you know, the, the, the thing that happens is when you're in a correction and I'm not saying Caesar was an air stock, but when you have young stocks, IPOs or concept plays, they get hit really quickly because they don't have the institutional support. So if you recall, we were playing Caesar and we bought it at like 11 and change. We added a 13. It was flagging really nicely near 15. At that point, I was actually out of it. And then once it broke that level, you had, a, you had a high level stop. And it's funny because yesterday I stared at it three times and I didn't buy it. I had guys that sold it above 14 and a half. Oh, can we buy back Caesar? Or mm -hmm. they said the same question. Or is it you know, mortally wounded? I'm like, well, if you sold it at 14 and a half, you have the luxury of buying back at 12 and a half. You know, because I think they were in, still in tier one because they bought it right at 13 and they sold some and held some so they were able to buy some back so now today it was up what a dollar and even look at it today <laughs> it, it was on the c list you know why, why would it be on the a list so anyway you know it, it had a nice bounce today if you look at the chart of czr you will see that i'm not involved and unfortunately um you know i, I wish I, I i you know it's, it's that inner voice guys you know if you look at something three four times and you stare at it chances are it's telling you something and just listen to it so here was your first trade this is when we first got involved in the virtual trade floor here was your, your add-on trade. And then right around here, when it was flagging, I remember really nicely, I just want you to look at this pattern. Look at this engulfing day. Okay, this day right here engulfed this entire flag. Right there, if you're watching it very closely, that's your sell signal, right there. Did you see a day like this in any of these other days? No. You know, you, you, know, you look at the chart and that's what bar by bar analysis does. It tells you when there's a little bit of trouble because we don't mm -hmm. know what the institutions are doing. We don't know what people are saying about it in the analyst department. We just know charts. And if you look here at the chart again, you will see that this potent day right here said, you know what, this move could be under jeopardy. Plus I think the market was under some pressure. And then pow, big move lower. Um, and then it was hard to see a day like today coming, but you know, it did hold higher. 
Okay, and then once it really triggered above this little area here, which was what, uh, 1285, it got a little frisky. So I would say now, you know, it's probably going to need a little time before it can get back above 14. If you want to take a look here, I guess as far as like trend lines, it's hard to really even do that because it's so fresh. You know, this is, you know, it's coming right back into it. So here's your retest of this trend line since the bottom of the IPO. Could rest here. We'll see how, how it goes. It's now been public for almost three months. At some point, it will create another pivot. And, you know, with some more sideways work, maybe above 15, next time it goes, there'll be more people involved in it and it'll look better. And um, is there any questions on LVS since we're talking about um, um, Caesar right now? Not that I have right now, um, but we could stick with the IPO subject. Okay. Um, Hugh Fork wants to know, can you shed some light on stocks potentially affected by the Facebook launch? Many are red, Yelp, Zynga, Fio. Well, the funny thing about those stocks is everyone had a concept there. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> concept plays are, are plays because you violate all your technical rules. And I did that also. Everyone was saying about three months ago, two months ago, that when Facebook comes out, Zynga's gonna be 20 bucks, it has to be. When if something has to happen, everyone's saying it, typically it doesn't happen. If you look at Zynga, just to show you, you know, this stock, you know, if you, if you remove the name, it, it acted like such junk that you would never have been involved in it, you know, and shows you the round trip here. This is when it traded above this IPO high, right? This is when it started acting better, came off the lows, it came up, you, this was your trigger, it triggered through that IPO high, so shorts covered. Then we had another nice move here, nice little flag type pattern, but look at this trade. This is an outside day. This is a sell signal. It doesn't matter if it's Zynga. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, who names it. It just doesn't matter. This is a pattern here. But a lot of people didn't believe this pattern because they said it's Zynga. It's going to be $20 when Facebook comes out. It has to happen. So P.S., that was your sell signal. Never came back up. Then if you look from here, you know, it sort of broke a more macro wedge and then just slowly trickled lower. It had the secondary. For me, you know, I got probably stopped out right around here on this pony on my way to Boston. And then... You know, it, it's had a little bit of a bounce. I think earnings came out after hours. It was all over the map, so I'm not exactly sure right now. But overall, this, this seems broken. It needs more time. And I think the, the, the moral of the story is, is still, you know, don't have a thesis or don't mm -hmm. have a concept. Watch the price action, because if you watch the price action here, I know a lot of people violated all their stop loss rules because they said this has to happen, this has to go up. And meanwhile, you know, maybe it goes up on Facebook, but it goes from 8 to 10 versus from 15 to 20. And if you talk like something about like Yelp, let's just take a quick look there since someone was asking about it. This too shows you how, you know, pricing and timing are key. Here's when it came public. You know, obviously you don't chase it the first few days. This is when finally you had a nice technical pattern here in Yelp. You know, it woke up, traded above this 24. Then you could have added to it when it then broke above the IPO high, went as high as 32. And then this time it wedged again, right? Wedged again. And what, what did it do this time in this wedge? Did it resolve to... The upside or the, the downside. downside. Brought to the downside. So I don't care what everyone says about you know the, the the future of this company. The wedge broke to the downside. Get out of the way. We'll find another entry. And if you go back to the chart here on Yelp, you will see that now we're right back down to you know where the IPO lows were. So it, it, it could be worth I guess a look down here. But again, it's still above 20. Um, for for me, maybe I look for a day trade if it starts getting above 22. You could get a bounce back to about 24. But I think that's how you have to, you know, pretty much compartmentalize it versus having just a full-fledged thesis. Okay. And then something like REN, we <laughs> traded that a couple of weeks ago. Like, would you look to get back into that on this pullback or? You know, people keep asking me about it. And, the, you know, it's, it's some, some people, who goes back to think, okay, I can speak English. Anyway, <laughs> one of the biggest things that traders do that, that sometimes gets them in trouble is they go back to the well. Just because something worked once doesn't mean it's going to work again. But again, just like Caesar, if you sold it well, into strength, you have the luxury of retesting some situations. And, and REN was awesome for us because it was a tradable pattern and you could have traded for cash flow and it continued to hold higher. If you look here at REN, when we were looking at it, right, here's when you had a nice, nice tight pattern. We talked about it. This was a long, long consolidation, very tight. We look at tight patterns because it gives you points of reference. I think we got in tier one around 590. We added through this 620 and then you had a really nice move. You could have, you know, tiered in, tiered out. I know that, you know, through here we actually even added some more. But then look what happened here. You had a little bit of a reversal. I think this is, again, the day I was in Boston, mm -hmm. you know, I left with some because I had tier one left. I probably was in like tier two or three here, went back to tier two or tier one, then held a trailer. Then once it traded above this 745, 
went as high as 787 and traded back below, that was a sell signal. So I sold and said, I'm going to wait. So I have the luxury of buying it back because I didn't get caught. Or if you miss that and you look at this little flag pattern saying, okay, flag, nice consolidation, trying to consolidate the move from here, want to start to break below seven, that was your way out. So, you know, again, fast forward, what do you have right here? This small little pattern. This is, what, what's, uh, what's the name of this little pattern here, Vicky? A red dog reversal. Hey, a red dog <laughs> reversal. But this one to me, I think is like a minor red dog reversal. It's not gonna, it, it could be an inflection trade, but I think it was just a, a tradable pattern with the plan for a day and a half move. So if, which I didn't take advantage of, take a look back at the chart. If you sold here when it went back below 745, you know, you had to move all the way down to as low as, um, what is this? This is like almost 620. So you saved yourself $1.20. So here, when it traded below 620, okay, made a low here at 603, you could have rebought 620, 17 cent stop on something that just pulled in over a dollar. And then here you go, it went as high as 658 today. So you made yourself 30 cents. So little cash flow trade, but still as far as being a, a bigger or longer term trade, it has a lot to prove. So some people trailing it will have their stop at the low here of 603. And if it can go sideways a little bit longer, maybe there'll be another trade at some particular point if it could do a, a more macro wedge here, I guess. And next time it gets above seven, maybe it gets some real traction, but it's not that exciting to me right now. Alrighty, um, let's move on to another question. It's actually back to the casinos, but not LVS. <laughs> um, Kudan underscore T wants to know, what do you think of SHFL? Same group as LVS and has been in a decent base. SHFL. I S haven't really traded this in a while, but I'll just put up the chart and I'll tell you what I think. SHFL. I've heard about it, obviously, within the group. If you look here, you know, actually, this looks pretty good. Um, it's been, you know, trending upwards. Obviously, if you go all the way back, let me even take a little bit more of a, of a longer term stance here. Um, you know, from October, okay, you have two different uh, trends here. This one was following and then it somewhat you know, broke a little bit, but not, I would say, not too drastic. Um, from the last time it, it started to accelerate, yeah, I would say right here it broke a, a bit. But if you put it in perspective, you know, and look at it on a micro level here, just like LVS, this was probably the day that LVS topped, you know, came in, you know, retested the line. And I would say now at this particular point, um, it, it's holding the 50 day, which I think is healthy. Um, you could be trading it long verse, just say 16 bucks or 1650. And if it were to start getting above uh, this little area here, this is, uh, 1730 it could go back you know into motion to the upside i do think that it's acting well considering um you know what transpired in the last month or so but all in all you know it's had a really nice move it, it broke this trend somewhat so i would say let it get back above it you know and that would act healthy but if it doesn't make sure to use this as your line in the sand because it, it, you know it's come a long way and i'm not sure if for reported earnings so make sure you know when you know your earnings come out all righty um let's move on to another question from Active Investor. Um, Scott, are you back in the OAHs? What do the charts indicate short term? I'm not back in the OAHs, and right. it not, doesn't mean it's a bad thing or doesn't mean it's not working because there has been some money rotated there or, a bit, or there's been money going there. And in Morning Call, I've talked about Schlumberger, I've talked about a few other names. I know Sparling was talking about EOG, PXD, and you know, they look like they're acting better. I just didn't have the wherewithal to go with it. I've been actually kind of enamored with trading Apple back and forth. So it, you know, it comes in phases. If you look here at the OHs, I'll, um, you know, I'll dissect it a little bit for you. If you guys remember, okay, when I was on um, Kramer, you know, or off the charts, this was the inverse head and shoulders pattern, right? Here was your, your left shoulder, the head, the, the right shoulder, and this was your tier one. This is when it started getting frisky to get into tier two, and then it tried to get above this resistance and failed. Okay, so, but still from here, it was a nice move up to resistance, so you could have taken trades along the way. If you look at it right now, you know, it pulled back in. You could, I guess you could even draw this chart somewhat. It's still, you know, it's still below this, you know, this trend line. So if, just say you, you sold it, you know, when it broke this, you have the luxury of buying some back a little bit. Um, as far as support, recent support, here it is around 38. So if you, you know, take a closer look so we could dissect it here a little bit. You know, the, the market rallied the last four days, so it's good to see that the OAH has rallied with it. It didn't diverge to the, the downside. Um, there's going to be some, some decent size resistance coming in here at 41.69. You know, so that'll be the next obstacle. Um, if it could hold higher, I'd say if it holds above 
this 3990 I would say that that's healthy and then through here you have a move and as far as some of the stocks here I know Schlumberger has been acting much better um, you know it, it, it held this support I, I like this one I'm not long it but um, we started talking about an options profits with Jill right around 65 it's gone higher I think with some more longer term uh, consolidation right in front of 75 it could be a good uh, momentum trade so it's still in front of you I think um, did you put SLB in the off the charts tonight it's going in tonight yes all right so SLB will be in off the charts tonight as a, as a potential actionable trade if you missed it already it's still being set up so if you go back to the chart SLB looks good as far as um, you know the potential uh, set up here so I would say as long as it holds above this 72 area goes sideways above this 75 you can get some momentum um, as far as EOG I know Sperling was looking at that one this too also looks pretty good okay with the four days bounce back it's above the this I think it's above the 50 day is it above the 50 day um, no actually it, it it's below it so the two actually yeah so anyway it, it's looking okay let me look at a few others some guys were asking about oxy um, nice little bounce uh, last week we were talking about support at at 85 and then it started to clear this lower pivot still looks good you know it has some room so as far as like these stocks you know they are looking better okay they could be a tier one as far as trading i think our traders are just starting to like talk about them again mm -hmm. like we haven't talked about the names in this group you know probably in the last six weeks or, or or even like seven weeks so if people are starting to talk about them that means they're moving a bit faster they're acting a little bit better so it's worthy of your attention but uh the back office wants me to remind you that you see that number there okay right there if you put your number in you have the luxury of potentially there you go. <laughs> the, the trader psychology course, which trader psychology is obviously very, very important because it talks about how you can control your, your psychology, um, whether it's your tier size, whether it's your mental state, whether it's your money management. There's a lot of things that go into trader psychology, not just the X and O's of trading or, or finding winning stocks. So after that little sales message, what, what's the next question? Well, let's go to a commercial as well. All right, good. I can use a commercial. <laughs> I'm starting to sweat up here a little bit. <laughs> I'm in a little MGM and I'm still in OIH. I bought it this morning at 107.50. Apple's good. Yeah. You, know, you don't buy in the first five minutes of the day. I live in Jersey City. I was born in Long Island. Went to school at SUNY Albany. As a firm, we are five partners and I'm one of them. I am the strategist that puts the game plan together for about 400 traders. I kind of command that army. It's going to make us money with that is on a day like today, if it's up or down three handles, that's when you see where other money is really getting put to work and that's where the action is. You held 1600 the whole time? I got a thousand. See, that's a growing experience for you, brother. <laughs> All of the traders trade our money, so they have to be right. They have to say, okay, I think Apple's going from 260 to 265. If they're right, they make money. It's a good setup. Stick with the win. Okay. It's the right trade. Don't watch it so close. Relax. Scott's coming on in a minute, so we're going to listen to Scott. <laughs> Technicals first. Market looks good. Volume seems a little light. What do you see? Right now, the market's been behaving very well technically. Let's talk to this guy. Now, here's a guy, Scott Redler, who does nothing but technical analysis, but puts his money where his mouth is because he's got a firm and his partners put their money in every day and trade on technical analysis. I'm not looking for a home run. I'm not. It's not a get rich quick scheme. If I'm able to pick the direction of the market, I could book a winning trade and I could provide for my family. <laughs> Where's the breakout? That is the next evolution. All right, welcome back. We're starting to run out of time, so let's just get right to the questions. Vicky, what's on deck? All right, this is from AO Trader. Scott, what are your thoughts on the autos? GM, Ford. Uh, this is a clear-cut example on knowing your time frame. I think I could trade four to GM maybe twice a year because of setups. Last time I tried trading this one for a breakout, you know, into the auto the auto numbers, I actually wound up losing a decent amount of money. So if you look at the chart of Ford, you know, it doesn't matter what I did with it. The bottom line is here is you know a nice uh, channel, nice consolidation pattern. You know, after what was a nice move from. You know, this little breakout here, this was the last time it went in motion above 11, and then when I wound up clearing this area. So, you know, consolidation was good. I think, 
you know, when I got beat up on this, um, I'm not sure if it was <laughs> right here, that could have been me buying the stock, you know, or right around here, but PS, it broke below this channel here, you know, so you had a, a move down below most of the moving averages. You had a little bit of a snapback, you know, I think you're, you know, you're coming into some resistance right around here, right into where it broke down from, so I wouldn't be chasing and buying it up here. You know, if anything, some guys might try and short it. As far as, um, as an investment, you know, and if you're holding a longer term and you're into the autos, mm -hmm. I guess if you're pro uh, U.S. economy, this is, could be one of your positions. I wouldn't be something you focus on. Even as a trader, when I had it, I had like 10, 12 positions. So I'm like, you know what? It's one of them. So I want to just put some money to work. And I thought it would be safe. And obviously, <laughs> it wound up breaking down. If you look at GM here, um, I don't think it looks much better, okay, uh, as far as the technicals of this chart. Uh, I'm looking just clear cut at it. Um, you, you had a bit of like a wedge type pattern right here that got resolved to the downside and then you go a little bit longer term. It tried to hold. This day was a pretty big engulfing day. When it took back this day, closed the gap and became pretty bearish. And you know, it, it, it came into where it broke out from here. I, again, this just looks, you know, it's really noisy just in, in general. Let's take a, a, a look back or a, a little bit even further here. To me, I think you're parking, hey, autos, I think you're parking money <laughs> and, and you're not going to expect much. I don't see anything technically right now as a trader for you to be involved in it. As an investor, I don't know where, you're, where you entered it, but this spot right here doesn't look compelling. This would not even be on my C list. Okay. Um, this next question is from a pillar shreddy, something like that. Ooh, um, a pillar shreddy. Hey, Scott, what do you think of AIG? Can I add above 3380? I am in tier one now. How about this, Vicky? You said to me today, let's look at AIG. So why don't you answer the question? Okay, I can do that. Um, well, okay. AIG has been on my radar for a couple okay. days now. Um, when the market was correcting, it held in really well look above, I think, 3150-ish, 31. No, it must have been 32-ish. Um, anyways, the range was getting pretty tight. So I figured if we thought the market was going to be strong today, that could be a stock to go after. It kind of consolidated if you looked on a smaller time frame throughout the morning. And then once it went above that 33, like that was my initial position with an ad above 3340-ish, which so, was the breakout of that flag. So this was this morning and then this is where you added right around here? Right. Okay, and then it had a nice move. I remember you saying it to me, and that's the beauty of being on a desk. The beauty mm -hmm. of being on a desk with a lot of trades you trust is you can't see everything. That's why we talk about community. That's why we talk about, you know, a thousand eyeballs are better than two. So <laughs> Vicky brought me this trade today, and she's like, oh, AIG looks good. I just bought some. I might add some. And I kind of, you know, didn't do it. So <laughs> I apologize, Vicky. I can't do everything. But I right. also know that I'm moving tomorrow. I was up a decent amount of money. So I was just like, you know what? I just don't want to get involved. Uh, but it wound up being a good trade. So if you go back to the chart here of AIG, you will see that stock actually on the daily is showing some leadership, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's at, today it's at highs of the move right. of this year where the market's not even there. So something's going right there. I, I know as far as the, the media hates it, everyone loves to bash it. I also remember, you know, when I tweeted about it way back when, it was right around here. Yeah, the 200 day. Right around the 200, we had it on off the chart. So it shows you different trades, different time frames. Like if you bought it here and just trailed it, you know, you did very well. And, and I think since then, it's actually been acting much better, much better than the rap that people give AIG. But then again, that's why it's all about, you know, your pricing and timing and not about old memories and, you know, just what you hear you know, on, by the talking heads out there. So mm -hmm. anyway, what's the next question? Um, let's go to Stats Real. Um, Scott, general question. At what point were you able to attribute your su success to My skill? <laughs> I'm getting dirty. <laughs> um, attribute your success to skill versus some good fortune. Um, how long did it take? And mentally, how did you know you were there? <laughs> well, that's a lot of questions. <laughs> and, and, I, and I, uh, I, I guess, appreciate or thank you for the kind words. But I will tell you this. Every day is still a growth day for me. Every day I come in, I try and do a few things different to hold longer, make more money, do a few things that I, I, that I could do better. Okay, like just say for instance, this gold trade, okay, this GLD, uh, it got me like two, three times where I wasn't ready to break this intermediate trend. So in the past, I'd be like, you know what, I'm not trading the GLD again. I lost money two, three times. I don't like it. It gets me. It knows my number. It doesn't know my number. It just wasn't ready yet. So I went back to it. I'm in tier one. And this time, if it goes, I'll make money. So that's a work in progress. You know, as a trader, you know, you need to have a full package. 
Uh, we talk about it all the time on the desk that there's such a fine line between making and losing money mm -hmm. in any trade. It, it all goes to knowing yourself, taking accountability, knowing what you're good at, and, and being honest. And as far as me being successful, um, to be honest, I, I still don't think I'm anywhere close to where I, I hope to be one day. But I'm also very happy. You know, everyone measures success differently. Tomorrow I move. I'm happily married. You know, you've met Chase. I have a little three and a half year old. Yep. Very know, cute. <laughs> awesome kid. So it's like I don't look at someone else's car, anyone else's house, anyone else's bank account because, you know, you'll never get anywhere doing that. So, you know, for me, you know, I already feel like I'm successful, but I also want to fulfill my potential. I know I could do things better. So that's why I get up every day, 6.30 in the morning. I'm the first one in the office. I do my charts. I send out my note. We do the morning call. I trade the radio, the media, the site, the Twitter, you name it. It's all going on. And I still think I could do it better. I'm trying to work on it so I, I can make progress. And hopefully some of the, the, the trials and tribulations I've had and some mistakes that I've made, I've been able to talk about it. So it's helped you not make them, you know, the same way I did. But obviously everyone loves to make their own mistakes. Mm -hmm. You know, the same way, like, you know, you got to touch the hot stove to make mm -hmm. sure it's hot. But then next time you don't. So I would just say that as far as, you know, making mistakes, make them, but learn from them. And just be honest with yourself and listen to that inner voice because that inner voice always tell you, tells you the truth. And if you ignore the inner voice, you're going to turn big losses into huge losses or small losses into big losses because chances are your inner voice has seen the situation before and is telling you honestly how to react. All righty, let's go to another question. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, Travel to Paradise wants to know, what is your take on BAC and X? Well, BAC, you know, it's on the virtual trade floor right now. Mm -hmm. For some reason, it didn't really act well today. Um, I, you know, I've been trading JP Morgan. JP Morgan, I went long on Monday. You know, for, it showed relative strength for that bounce. If you look real quickly at JP Morgan real quickly, this is acting best. Okay, this is the day we bought it into the 50-day, now bounce back here. I think we have this on off the charts again tonight. You know, if it starts trading through this area of, uh, let me get the quote on up here a little higher. 44. This is what, yeah, 44 and change. You know, I think that it could pop up and that would be good for the market. As far as Bank of America, uh, in the last few days, I don't know, it's not really reacting that well. Okay, it, you know, last time I had a really nice pattern here, a nice tradable pattern was right around this area and it gave you a big move. Then if you look at timing wise, it flagged. And then once it broke below it with the market, it's in a corrective pattern. It did hold this prior breakout. I would have liked to see it acting better today. I'm still in some. I'm going to put my stop here around uh, 817. I think if you want to be a little bit looser, you put your stop there. You know, I was hoping to see a retest of this 870. I still think it could happen, but then you're going to have this really big downtrend to, to contend with. So I think from here to here, it could go, but Bank of America in this last move higher is not acting, the, you know, just it's not really acting well. Yeah, it started off strong, but it kind of petered out throughout the rest of the day. Yeah, and I took some, but again, tier one. That's it, just one of the multiple positions. And if it starts acting better, maybe I'll add. And again, I have my stops there. Um, and he also wanted to know about X. X. X, I think I heard a lot of people talking about today. You know, it's been very weak this year. Um, as far as the stock is concerned, a lot of people have been trying to get back into it. If you look at the chart, you will see. Um, it's actually at a pretty interesting spot. Okay, if you look here, you know, just, just before I even draw any lines, Vicky, what do you see as far as a chart pattern without it? Just your visibility. Um, it's holding an uptrend, or just came into an uptrend. And what do you see right there? What's it coming into, actually? Moving averages, like an apex. An apex, okay. So apex is something that forms when you have a tight wedge type pattern. So you were right, you do have somewhat of an uptrend here that it's been holding. You have a wedge type pattern, which typically happens right before um, a, a particular move to put it in motion. So if you look right here above this uh, 80, 2850, you know, it could release it. But overall, as far as the, the stock this year, it's been a big time disappointment. Look at the, you know, the pattern here. It's been just slowly, methodically holding this trend, you know, but now it's com coming into another little apex where if the market wants to stay strong, it could break above that. But if it starts to get below this uh, 2738, um, you could see the same trend of just a whole lot of nothing and weakness moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, okay, let's go to Ken R0966. Walmart today, it started to rebound after the negative NYT article on Sunday. Is this a buy now? I just think headline, headline news sometimes creates um, opportunity because mm -hmm. when there's adversity and there's emotion, you know, typically after a while it dissipates and, and then stocks forget. 
As far as uh, Walmart, we had a lot of really good trades in the beginning of the year on this. If you take a quick look at the pattern, you will see that it has had a, you know, a pretty sizable pullback right into the moving average where it bounced. Um, I, I think that it's still going to be in the headlines for a little bit. It was a, a decent sized bounce. It was looking good fundamentally and technically well before that piece of news. So at this point, you know, if you weren't trapped in it, you know, buying versus moving average, I think is okay. I think it's just going to need more time. If you're in Walmart long term, I would stay there. I still think this year it could work its way through these headlines. But at this particular point, it's just a, a little bit, you know, it's going to be a little bit choppy with the headlines. But again, if you didn't have it into this mess, you know, down here near the, what is that? Is that the 50-day moving average? No, actually, this also is inverted here. So this is, um, you know, the 200-day moving average. 200-day moving average is where institutions come and buy, and that's where it looked like they came in to buy after these headlines. Okay. Um, Ron Tyre just said, Spain downgraded, futures lower. Any thoughts? Ah, oh, Spain downgraded. What were they downgraded to? They must have been... Um, didn't say. All right, well, Spain downgraded is not, you know, I don't think it's the worst case. Um, I think that, you know, obviously people were worried about whether France would be downgraded. Um, but again, after a four-day move to the upside, having some positions with the hedge makes sense. Like if you look at my virtual trading floor right now, I think I'm long four or five positions, but I'm short the spiders. I was long the spiders all day to make money with the direction above 139.36. So when we closed above 140, I said, you know what, I'm going to get out of my spiders long because I have other positions. So I need to have a little bit of a hedge after a four-day move. So I shorted the spiders, and I'm still long some of the other positions. So with that said, tomorrow I'll see where we open. Uh, I'll cover some of the spiders and see if any of the positions I have are showing relative strength. So this way I could add to them and let things work out. And that's the way you maneuver when you're trying to have multiple positions. I haven't had multiple positions probably in, in six weeks. Today's the first time I have, I think, four or five with the hedge. So with that said, you know, obviously Europe is still a problem. So that's why you have to have a hedge. So intraday I was more directional overnight. I'm still net long, but at least I have a cushion into something that came out like Spain. And we'll see what happens tomorrow and we'll address it. And right now I have John Darcy coming in. He's the editor-in-chief of T3 Live. Yeah, let's get in the camera. Woo! Look, 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 at the, right. look at the floppy hair. He actually has, um, let me go here. Yeah, I think he has the, the raffle results. Yeah, we're excited to announce the results of the raffle. Uh, we had a lot of people enter, and uh, we appreciate that. And w without further ado, the winner of the raffle tonight is Fran Fleming. So Fran will be emailing you and contacting you about getting you that trader psychology course. And, uh, again, thanks for everyone who texted and entered the raffle. We'll do something again like this next week. So give it back to Scott. All right, with that said, I'm just going to hold the microphone, and I'll say we're going to close down right now. We went a little bit over, but we started a little late. I want to say thank you to Vicky. This was Vicky's thank first you. time as nice a co-host, and she will be back. <laughs> and we're going to keep this as a consistent show where we can answer questions about anything that it is you want. I'll maybe get Evan to come in, who has a different style. I'll have... Um, Sperling come in, you know, every now and then we'll change up co-hosts. So I want to make it interesting. I want you to get different looks. And as far as Vicky being here, she is my right-hand man or right-hand chick, <laughs> however you want to say it. And she does a great job and she's been for three, four years. And it just, you know, you're still in a work in progress. Everything's of a work course. in progress, whether you're here four years, whether you're doing it 14 years, whether you've been doing it 25 years. The smartest people I talked out there are still learning. They're still humble and they still want to just, you know, fulfill their potential in a way that makes them feel comfortable and that's different for everyone. Have a great night, everybody.